Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Happy Easter, it's Easter today, so a quick update because we saw a dump earlier today, but the market has recovered. So we're just gonna cover the majors like we looked at yesterday. As you can see here, yesterday's video, April alt season gems, Bitcoin dominance has broken down. So we are looking very good for alt season. I make mention, there's a ghetto wall behind me. Audio's a little bit off. I'm still out on holidays in North Trevor, but I'll be back tomorrow. So the setting should be crisp once again. So today, uh, this is Twitter, jump across to Twitter. Remember to like the video if you find some value from it, uh, subscribe to the channel, enter the giveaway. Three or so days left to go. You can enter the giveaway free. All you gotta do is put your email address in. Link is down below. So that's to win a 12 month membership to the Investor Accelerator. So a few more days left to enter that draw. So moving on, April old season from yesterday, um, some of the big caps were really starting to move. One that had me a little worried was Polkadot that did move and then we saw it reverse, but it looks like it's on its way again. Fear and Greed Index still sitting at 74, 73, 74. I think this is a good thing because Bitcoin has not broken into new all-time highs, which means the greed is still down and we're starting to see some of the profits rotate into the alts, which is setting them off. Think of Solana. Solana has gone nuts. That thing has broken to new all-time highs and still looking reasonably strong. Now, of course, none of this is financial advice. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. So I'm not giving you any buy recommendations here. This is just what the way I look at the charts and how I interpret the data, how I interpret the charts. Okay, so fear and greed is looking good. Something to note, XRP, the SEC agrees to redact two documents in Ripple lawsuit, but not Ripple's CEO's financial info. We looked at this yesterday, looking at uh, Ripple selling about a billion dollars worth of XRP annually, because they're selling at about 180 million XRP per year, uh, per month, which is approximately 90 million. Of course, that varies greatly depending on the price of the XRP coin or token. All right, uh, non-fungible tokens. So we're going to look at XRP briefly as well, but non-fungible tokens. Remember, we have looked at this many times around the narrative shift. And of course, NFTs, in this article anyway on Bitcoin.com, which is heavily Bitcoin cash influenced. I think it's owned by them. Anyway, back to NFTs. It looks like the narrative may, narrative may be shifting now. And so what we looked at yesterday was the narrative shifting towards Layer 2 and Ethereum and smart contracts and all that sort of stuff, which we can really see in the charts. And we were talking about sectors in the market itself. So NFTs have started to come down a little bit, whereas layer two and smart contracts are lifting. So they're starting to raise up. Now, one last article here, XRP pumps 12%, doesn't really, but as rumors of Coinbase relisting emerge. So this is rumors, not saying that Coinbase are going to relist it. I don't think they will at this stage because they're going to IPO in a week or two's time. I don't think you're gonna put any sort of uh, XRP token onto your platform if you're going to IPO. So I would say that's absolute nonsense. However, the price of XRP is looking reasonably good. So we've covered the XRP news. We are looking at the narrative shift towards the uh, layer two solutions for Ethereum. Non-fungible tokens looks like that is sort of shifting away again. Uh, I don't think it's gone forever. N NFTs are going to be the mainstay of this bull market along with DeFi as well. And of course, Ethereum. Looking at, uh, I've got the chart here, but let's just have a look at, oh, I was looking all the way down at 600 tokens here. Um, basically, the, the market cap. I think we're getting very, very close to $2 trillion, $1.9 trillion. There we are. Okay, so what am we going to here? Up here, $1.9 trillion. Bitcoin, 58000 Ethereum, 2000 Still at all-time highs, but we... You know, we've just cooled off a little from there. Binance is my big token here. Binance, Polkadot are making good moves. Cardano is still holding back, but I think it'll start to move. Um, XRP, like we looked at. Litecoin, still nothing. It is still killing us here. And Solana is the big mover. Look at this. Up 35% in seven days. Six billion market cap. This is something that I will do an interview on with a friend of mine who researches Solana very heavily along with let me get it right, Radium and Serum. Uh, he's just a huge fan of this area. So I might get him on. If you guys are huge fans as well, let me know in the comments down below. Bitcoin, looking at Bitstamp. Look at this. This is exactly what we look at in the Investor uh, the investor Accelerator membership. 
We look at swings, and then we had a double top here at the first low of swing top. This has a high probability of playing out, so we had a little of a pullback. I'm not saying we're going to get the huge move down here, which I would absolutely love because, you know, I've been waiting for 45k, but if we don't get it, we still got the reaction of the first lower swing top. This is the swing top here, double top. You let me know if you hear anyone else in the YouTube space talking about this sort of TA technical analysis because this is GAN theory looking at swings, right? And so this sort of gives you a little bit of an update and insight as to how these markets tend to play out. Um, basically from here, we've got a pretty good swing. Obviously now we're in waiting, waiting mode. If we broke through that, sure, you know, we head straight up and over the top of that, but we've had a reaction from the first lower swing top, which is a bearish sign long term. Yes, Bitcoin's going to go nuts, maybe even next month, maybe in next week. All right, but for now, we've had a little bit of a pushback. We're in Easter, okay, so happy Easter again, guys. We're in Easter time and the volumes have dropped off. So it's very difficult to get a bit more of a signal from this time because just not as many people are trading. It's people are off with their families, which is where I'll go straight up to this, hang out again. And, um, you know, we've got to wait on another signal. But for now, keeping Bitcoin in its trading range between the 50 and 60K, good sign for us wanting a nice big alt season. Back to Bitcoin dominance. It has fallen, a little retrace. Let's see if we get another push through when the markets come back tomorrow or the next day uh, for heavier trading volume. And let's get through this 57 level and off to our targets. Remember our targets way down here at around 54 and 50. This is our GAN Fibs double top. We want to go at least 125 to 150. 150% of this range, 50. 50% dominance to Bitcoin. And that is going to escalate as Ethereum begins to push up even more. Let's have a look at Ethereum and then onto our Binance. So we're looking at the majors today and a continuation of the altcoin season. So updating that, uh, Ethereum sitting at 2000 $2,016. Now we did see a good solid move up. We've had one day down, which was yesterday's action. Basically, we're still in all-time high territory. So I'm still very, very bullish on this sense. And it's basically that push out, break above old all-time highs, come back, test the old all-time high before we go again. That's the setup at the moment. Now, for that to be invalidated, we'd have to uh, sell off back into this trading range between 19 and 1,400. Call it 1,500 through to 1,900. So this would be a false breakout at this point. And then we would continue to consolidate or break down. So at the moment, it's a good setup. If you wanted to be conservative, uh, looking at a conservative entry point is above these highs of 2,145. If you want to get in early, this is this point here. Of course, not financial advice. This is just the way I read the markets as I have learned from WD Gann, the way he would have traded these sort of markets. It's a breakout, a breakout trade. Uh, DOT and BNB. So let's get across to BNB USDT. It's looking very similar. So we've had a little breakout, come back and test these old highs. So it's testing the old all-time highs, testing the old high, testing the old breakout before the, the next one. So this broke out, and then we come back and sat on that to test. Volume has increased over these days, even though we're through Easter. BNB, one of my hold lists. Getting in, it's a nice breakout. Uh, safer entry, of course, is above the old highs, and we get a solid break above with volume. So BNB, still liking the look at that. You know I'm a fan of CRO for the Aussies. CoinSpot is a place you can buy CRO. Not financial advice, not saying go and buy it. This is just a good place in Australia. Links are in the description for Coinbase, uh, sorry, CoinSpot. Aussies and um, for the other trades obviously SwiftX down there and for anyone international you guys can use Binance link down below 10% off your trading fees all right so that's Ethereum looking good Bitcoin dominance looking good Bitcoin looking good for us in alt season if we get a breakdown boom let's push some more cash in I, I really love lower Bitcoin at 40 to 45 that would be ideal uh, dot was the next one which has pushed to new all-time highs that was scaring me yesterday's bar. I filmed the video as we broke out and then we came back under. Now we have had a higher close and I think this will just set up. This is, you know, fingers crossed, we set up above the 42 level and then we start to take off for, for dot and we go into a nice big explosive move. Maybe we double from that point. That would be that would be beautiful, right? Okay, Phil has been a, ma a major breakout. So this is uh, Filecoin. 
not too sure yet. It has pushed to new highs, but now we've seen a little bit of a of a pullback. So this might just consolidate these levels. That's that's the best case scenario. Uh, GRT, you know, has been a big one that we have followed for quite some time. Build up area. If we happen to fall back into our accumulation zone, that's me. I like it. Going to continue to accumulate between that dollar and dollar sixty. And uh, the bigger ones on our list were Link. Still, like we looked at yesterday. Still accumulation, our date that we're looking at for link to break through the highs, it's just a forecast looking at previous periods, time periods that it's taken, 77-ish days, okay? So somewhere in mid, oh, sorry, late April to early May for a nice big break out of these highs. And being that it's been sitting under these levels, no one's been talking about chain link, this is the times that people should be getting on to crypto. So it's, again, not financial advice, not, not to buy. But if you're looking for cryptos or s safer ones, you know, the bigger caps, not trying to find these small um, 500x coins, those sort of things, then these are sort of the safe looking chart patterns because we are accumulating above the old all-time highs that were set in August. All right, so we've broken out and it looks like we're potentially reaccumulating. Uh, the thing that would fall to this, that we would um, head down, you know, so that we invalidate our bullish accumulation, reaccumulation at higher zones, is if we happen to break down beneath these lows that have been set here at around 23 to 22 to $23. So if we started to break down and really look like it was weak, which we'll get to in, in future videos, if that happens, then that would invalidate this pattern and this would be then deemed as distribution, meaning the smart money is selling out before we go lower, right? So that is how you can tell, because this is still not confirmed as accumulation, but it looks like it with the higher lows that continue to form and we continue just to punch above some highs. That's that's what I'm looking at here with Chainlink, which is why it's another one on my uh, safer big cap plays. So that's pretty much most of the cryptos I want to look at besides Sol, which has just exploded yesterday broke through the resistance at 50%, so this is a major FIB extension, major low to major high, major low, that's how you use this tool. So that's this tool here that you can find on the side, trend-based FIB extension. And basically, you're just looking for uh, repeating patterns and targets for the market to hit. And so that hit my 50%, which is a potential bearish signal. And so it didn't fail completely at 50%, it hit it twice, broke through on the third attempt it looks like it's solid and potentially going to around 29 dollars if it's to extend this range we're an extension going to around 33 to 34 dollars potentially 38 before is another significant pullback so that's what i'm looking for with solana and like i said i might get someone to come on to chat more about solana in detail because it seems like an amazing project with an amazing ecosystem as well so that's what I wanted to get through today. Basically an Easter update looking at the majors because we had that dump and uh, it's it's kind of a, a, an interesting time being that we just broke through and then we saw a reversal. So at the moment it looks like we had the breakthrough, the retest of a lot of these major coins, major highs and potentially setting up just to get keep going. You know, people are still uncertain, like how did this happen so quickly? XRP, this is what we're looking at here on the chart. 59 cents, obviously the break of around 65 to 66 cents, depending on which exchange we are looking at. That looks like the point. So this is on Bitstamp. That looks like the area that we could get a confirmation of the break to the upside. The reason why it's, I don't see it as a great trade is because XRP against Bitcoin is still well and truly down. This could be a great play to increase the Bitcoin position. Of course, most people probably say, you know, it's gone up in dollar value. That's all they care about. That's your prerogative. Okay, so here we're at Bitcoin value and it's still very, very low. So um, XRP, not a bad setup. The breakout is above the 1100 sats. Could potentially get us somewhere to 2000 sats, which we looked at yesterday. And the next target is, of course, 3,000, just because of the support and resistance levels further back on the chart in December. Like I said there was plenty of last, but the shitcoin index, the shitcoin perpetual futures, which is on FTX exchange, another great exchange, and uh, they basically track all of the shitcoins to see where they are moving from here. Um, so if you want to know that one, just put in shit perp, and that is the chart that you are looking at here. All right, we'll keep a track of that. It's extended the range. We'll have a bit of a pullback. Maybe we we'll head again. 
not sure. Let's keep watching that one for now. Thank you very much, guys. Happy Easter to you. I'll see you back home instead of this dungy, uh, ghetto-looking, basement style backdrop you've got here. I'm at my family's place on the island here on Strabroke Island. So, uh, yeah, you know, we'll be off the island tomorrow. I'll see you back at home on the Gold Coast. Thank you very much for your support. Like the video up. Drop your comments down below. Uh, subscribe. Three or so, I'm pretty sure it's three days left to get your entries in for your chance to win one of three 12 month memberships. So go down below now, just put your email address in, you subscribe to the newsletter, your chance, and you're entering in the draw to win one of three, one of three free 12 month memberships. That's me done. I'm going to finish up for the video. Thank you once again, guys. I'll catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.